What's up guys, I'm Justin Ball and welcome back to The Recording Percussionist, where I show you everything you need to know to get from that beginning stage of looking at a microphone or camera for the very first time to that intermediate stage where you feel confident in your ability to set up, record, and edit an entire recording session all on your own. Today, we're taking things in a slightly different direction to discuss planning the recording session from a musical perspective. The big question here is, should we be recording full takes or chunks? Well, first, what's the end result? Is it for college pre-screenings, auditions, or other competitive reasons? Or is it for freelance use? Are you recording just audio or both audio and video? Based on how you answer these questions, by the end of this video, you'll have a really good idea of which one's gonna work best for you. If it's for competitive purposes, you will not be editing your recordings at all, whether it's audio or video, period. If you do choose to do this and you're exposed, you and the person editing your submission deserve whatever disciplinary action may apply. What this means for the recording side of things is that you'll be required to record full takes of your performance. The plus side to this is that there's very little editing involved, other than lining up audio and video if you're required to submit a video. The downside is, is that it usually takes a lot longer to get a take that you feel accurately represents your ability level. These are important considerations when deciding when you want to start recording for this sort of stuff. It's a good idea to plan multiple recording dates leading up to the deadline to A, adapt to the recording environment, and B, ensure that you get the level of recording that you want. If you're just recording a freelance performance video for maybe social media or your website, you can literally record however you want. As far as how to record freelance performances, the way I see it, you have four options. You can do full takes, full takes plus edits, chunks, or overlapping chunks. Let's talk about what each of these means. Full takes is pretty self-explanatory. It's obviously way easier to just get a full run of something rather than having to do any editing. It's also the most accurate representation of our ability level, and there's something to be said for really great recordings that are recorded this way. However, it's pretty much impossible to prove whether something was a full take or not when only the audio is present. And the fact is, with modern recording technology, it's easier than ever to edit sections of music together seamlessly. Full takes plus edits means that you're recording a series of full takes, sitting down and listening to determine the keeper, or whichever full take was best, then re-recording the spots you weren't happy with at the end of the session. In post, you'll take those re-recorded chunks and surgically implant them wherever the mistakes occurred, which I'll show you how to do in the audio editing series. When re-recording these chunks, it's important to start a few measures before and end a few measures after, especially with resonant instruments such as keyboards and timpani, so that the sustain of those notes before the spot you're re-recording is present in the recording. That sounds confusing, so here's an example. Let's say I miss a note in the first few bars. If I try to go back and record starting on that note, the resonance from the previous notes stops very suddenly, exposing my editing process. However, if I start the measure before, it sounds perfectly natural because those notes have had time to dissipate. Again, we'll talk more later about how to do this, but for now, at least you know why it needs to be recorded this way. Chunks means that you're recording chunks of music that do not overlap. For example, I'll play the first two bars and stop, but leaving enough room afterwards for the notes to completely die away. Then I'll record the third and fourth bars, And similar to the full takes plus edits approach, I'll simply place one chunk after the other, and the natural decay at the end of the first chunk blends perfectly with the following chunk. One of the cons of this process is that you risk misinterpreting the touch of the first note of each chunk, like so. So, it's important to listen back before you're done with your session to double check the start and end of your best takes. In theory, using this method, you could technically record the entire piece note by note, 
but I wouldn't recommend it because that's a lot of wasted time and energy that could simply be avoided by, I don't know, practicing. It should also be noted that this approach is only for audio recordings, because if I did this with video, I'd end up with a ton of really harsh edits, and you'd be able to see me physically stopping at the end of each chunk, which looks kind of dumb. Overlapping chunks works best for audio and video. If the chunks you're playing overlap by two or three measures, the video transitions will be much smoother and the musical interpretation will be much more accurate than if you're recording chunks. The primary reason for recording this way is the difficulty of the piece. If it's a longer piece with lots of notes and physical prowess, doing multiple runs at high intensity will run you into the ground, both physically and mentally. You want to be fresh when you're playing this stuff, so maybe it's best to figure out a few smaller chunks to help space out the physical demands a bit. Let's say for example you're recording a 10 minute piece. You could sit down with your score and figure out 5 different chunks, each averaging about 2 minutes in length. Some may be a little shorter and longer than others, and that's fine. Just do whatever makes the most sense musically. As you approach your recording date, make sure to have both short and long chunks planned out and mark them in your score, whether it's physical or digital, and share them with the person that's going to be recording you. If you both show up knowing what the plan is, you'll both perform at a higher level and get out of there sooner. If you're the one performing, spend a good amount of time leading up to the session practicing those exact chunks so that it's not something new to you when the time comes. From a logistics standpoint, make sure you've got the room reserved for at least twice the amount of time you think you'll need to record everything. It's better to have too much time than not enough. Don't forget the little things like water bottles, a towel to wipe off sweat during breaks, all of your sticks and mallets, and the right clothes. Look, a lot of this stuff should go without saying yes, but let's face it. When we're under pressure, we make a lot of mistakes. That being said, make lists. You'll thank yourself later. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're learning as much as I am from this series, consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video where we talk about starting the session and little things such as labeling mics, input levels, panning, capturing room noise, and slating. Until then, happy recording.